All right, hello everyone. So uh, now to uh, part two of the MCU Trinity discussion. This being on um, technically the first Avenger, Captain America, Steve Rogers. So yeah, like the Iron Man video, this one is gonna discuss all his appearances from his solo films and his trilogy up to the four Avengers movies, <coughs> and um, just any other cameos and or um, other appearances, big or small. So I uh, guess without further ado, let's go ahead and discuss um, his very first film, Captain America, the first Avenger, which I gotta say, wow. How to do a freaking uh, war film, but with Marvel. This is how you do it right here. Um, just about everything from the story. Captain America, great character. Steve Rogers, especially before the Captain America experiment. And really like how um, Steve Rogers is definitely a, a perfect example of all heart. He just needed the body to be able to go fight in World War II as it takes place during World War II with Hydra, a organization that initially worked with the Nazis, but then I believe um, their leader, Red Skull, the villain of this film, decided, you know, I'm going to go do my own thing. But um, yeah, this was a great origin, definitely up there among the MCU's best origin films. And um, also a nice introduction to Hydra, as we would see them, as Captain America would fight them uh, again and again. The bulk of his rogues gallery definitely comes from Hydra, one thing I've noticed. And also, he had some solid allies, too. And it's not just Red Skull, there's also his assistant, Arnim Zola. And various others that I'll mention as we get to his other solo films. And, and uh, all the Avengers, because one of them appeared in Age of Ultron. But, uh, yeah, he also had other allies like Tony Stark's father, Howard, who I previously mentioned in my Tony Stark video. And uh, the love of his life, Peggy Carter, who he met and who she always loved. And even when he uh, was just a small, scrawny kid from Brooklyn. Oh, and his best friend, Bucky, who will be way more important. But I'll just say that's uh, one of his, that's his best friend right there for now. And I'll just leave it at that. And they fought together in the war. And, uh, yeah, freaking, uh, it, it even shows it too, if you don't believe me, that Peggy always liked the skinny Captain America, Steve Rogers, well before his super soldier transformation. So, uh, yeah, overall, it's a great uh, way to do that, show how Captain America became Captain America, along with how he... Um, got out of his USO show because that's initially what he was doing. He was basically doing his own little USO show to raise money for the war, but he felt like he could be doing more. And um, yeah, I guess that's all I got on the basic story and character. So I'll just, just be discussing my favorite moments in this movie for Cap. And then, then yeah, we'll go into the other films and really going to try hard to condense the length in this video because the... Iron Man 1 was a little longer than I expected, just, uh, at least it wasn't the length of that Black Widow video, but, um, definitely want to keep this one shorter since Captain America didn't appear in as nearly as many films as Tony Stark's Iron Man. So yeah, many awesome scenes, especially the first one where he goes after a Nazi spy who infiltrated the super soldier experiment and, uh, uses a car door as a shield and, uh, also, um, it was also real nice too. Oh, when Bucky got captured and he just was like, I gotta go in and save him and basically went into enemy lines and frickin' uh, rescued him. And also the Howling Commandos, which were like his uh, elite soldiers, his team that he put together. And, uh, oh, Howard Stark also made his shield. I gotta mention that, the vibranium shield made out of the rarest metal on Earth. And uh, he had so many different ones and then chose that one. And it's so funny. There's a scene where Peggy grabs her pistol and starts shooting it and it ends up working. <laughs> and him and Howard are like all dumbfounded when they're looking at each other. It's pretty hilarious. And uh, yeah, Captain America also. There's some badass scenes where he's going around 
shooting up Nazis and or Hydra. And uh, the final fight on Hydra's base was real pretty, was pretty awesome. And him chasing down Red Skull and getting in one of his manned missiles to take him on. And his final clash with Red Skull was a solid final clash. And also the ending was pretty nice too, how he was frozen after flying down the plane saying to Peggy, look, I'll go get my, I'll go uh, get my dance because he was, always the optimist like spider-man but uh he didn't and uh we'll find out if he will in the future or not but uh yeah he freaking uh crashed red skull's plane with all the bombs because they were going to take down the east coast and freaking uh he wakes up in the modern day in a real nice scene where he's running around because shields try they're trying to explain it to him and Nick Fury shows up and Cap's all like, what's going on? And he's all like, you've been asleep, Cap, for almost 70 years. And then he's all down and he's all like, are you going to be okay? And he's like, I had a date. And yeah, pretty awesome. And pretty awesome credits too. Shows a lot of World War II propaganda. And the Captain America theme fits the character really well. I'd play it, but I don't want to get flagged for copyright like all my other dance videos. But I'd recommend giving it a listen. It's a pretty solid one. So I guess that's everything I got to say about Captain America, the first Avenger. Definitely set the impression real well for him and liked the trailer for the Avengers at the end. Got me hyped for the Avengers. So um, I guess now we'll go ahead and go into his next appearance in the Avengers. So yeah, this movie is the next one after... Um, after his solo film appearance and deals a bit with him adjusting to modern day, but that's more the focus of Captain America, the winter soldier, but it did lead to a real nice deleted scene where there's this waitress who's flirting with him and he's not even noticing it. And a deleted Stanley cameo where he's all like, ask for her number, you moron. <laughs> but uh, yeah, also shows uh, what's going through his mind after coming back from world war two. And, um, Definitely shows him in this movie throughout, keeping the team together, and uh, that's what I liked about how it solidified him as the leader, and how throughout it all always gave the speeches to get the Avengers doing what they needed to do, and uh, just about every Avenger he had some solid interactions with. This was the beginning of his friendship with Natasha Romanoff, so yeah, Black Widow, and um, they had almost instant chemistry, probably because Chris Evans and Scarlett Johansson had worked together before. I did watch them in The Perfect Score, and they did have nice chemistry in that movie. And, uh, yeah, him and Iron Man, this was the beginning of uh, their friendship and whatnot, and also showed why they <laughs> definitely didn't get along at first at the very beginning of the movie. And he also um, had some nice interactions with both Bruce Banner and the Hulk, especially during the Battle of New York when he's like, and Hulk, smash! <laughs> but uh yeah and same thing with thor and um even hawkeye even though he didn't talk to hawkeye much because hawkeye was mind controlled in this movie and same thing with nick fury especially like the scene where he's like bet you 10 bucks you're wrong when he says he wouldn't be surprised by how much the world has changed along with everyone at shield like uh, maria hill and he even had some decent interactions with loki but yeah, this was definitely a nice second appearance for him and um, definitely would lead to uh, more greatness. So guess I'll go ahead and just discuss my favorite moments uh, in this movie. So yeah, I really like uh, his fight with Loki in the beginning where uh, Loki's trying to act like Hitler and he's all like, kneel, you will all kneel before me. And then there's one brave man who's like, not to men like you. And he's all like, oh, I'm not like other men. He's like, there's always men like you. And then Captain America showing up and blocking Loki who's trying to disintegrate him with his shield and freaking... Um, yeah, just a real badass fight where he's just fighting Loki, even though he's not gaining much ground. But uh, it is pretty nice when <laughs> Iron Man shows up and blasts him and he frickin' points his weapons at him and he sees him in Captain America and he's all like, okay, yeah, I'm gonna throw in the towel right now. 
Plus, he had to break up Iron Man and Thor when uh, they were fighting. <clears throat> and that was a pretty nice one, too. Especially when Thor freaking uh, has Mjolnir. And he's all like, you want me to put the hammer down? And then he ends up hitting it, causing a massive shockwave. And he knocks down just about everyone. But yeah, he freaking hits his shield and causes a massive shockwave. And that's a pretty awesome moment. But uh, yeah, after that, also, he has a pretty awesome fight on the shield helicarrier when they were being hijacked. And the Battle of New York, there's so many moments to choose, especially when he's just going around throwing his shield at the Chitari, and also when he's getting the Avengers to come together all at once. That was pretty nice. And also telling them where to be, where to go, so there's less civilian casualties. And the great moment with an NYPD police officer when he's all like, uh, why should I take orders from you? And then he takes down a couple Chitari and he's all, and then after that, he immediately listens to him. <laughs> yeah, but um, also it's real nice too how, um, shoot, near the end, he stops these Chitari from taking down a bank and he is freaking visibly tired and wanting to, and you can just tell, but he's all like, no, I'm not fighting till I can't breathe anymore. And <laughs> Also leads to a nice interaction with the Hulk, or not the Hulk, um, with uh, Thor. Where he's like, what, you getting sleepy? So yeah. And guess that's everything I gotta say about him with the Avengers. He was real solid, real great, and um, definitely really loved it. So I guess I'll briefly discuss his cameo in Thor The Dark World, and then on to the Winter Soldier. So yeah, he had a small cameo in Thor The Dark World when Loki is impersonating him. Which is pretty funny. And he's all trying to act like comic book Captain America all over the top. And it's all like, gosh, I feel this outfit. I feel the freedom flowing in me. And uh, <laughs> gosh, like you can tell Tom Hiddleston had a fun time impersonating Chris Evans. <laughs> but uh, yeah, gosh, and vice versa. Chris Evans impersonating him. But yeah, that was a nice little Easter egg right there that I really liked. But I guess on to the big tamale, that being Captain America, the Winter Soldier. And um, gosh, love this movie from the start. And uh, let's just say him teaming up with Black Widow was a real great choice. They played off each other real well, obviously, and it only continued with their chemistry, along with showing their similarities and their differences and furthering his relationship with Nick Fury and S.H.I.E.L.D., and also one of S.H.I.E.L.D.'s new executives, Alexander Pierce, and the titular Winter Soldier who comes back, and that being Bucky. So yeah, just the basic plot, then I'll sum up my favorite moments, is uh, Captain America going on the run after an assassination attempt on Nick Fury. And um, Hydra, it turns out, has been with S.H.I.E.L.D. or corrupting them over the decades and subtly influencing them and history and uh, also dealing with Captain America readjusting to the world, like in the opening scene where he meets Falcon, who I'll discuss more in uh, future films. But he is awesome in this movie and definitely this was a great introduction to him. Much like uh, Black Widow in Iron Man 2. And, uh, yeah. Um, definitely a real nice scene, too, where Artem Zolo reveals this news and uh, how he just freaking goes in and saves Natasha almost immediately. And, uh, <clears throat> yeah, it turns out Alexander Pierce has been with Hydra the whole time. And many S.H.I.E.L.D. agents who we thought were with actual S.H.I.E.L.D. were really Hydra. And it also shows Senator Stern from Iron Man 2. So now it makes more sense why he wanted the Iron Man armor, because they were deemed as threats. But, uh, yeah, frickin', um, yeah, him and Black Widow had many great scenes. So, um, here's just a few of these before I discuss that further in my favorite Captain America moments. But yeah, as I was discussing in my Black Widow video, it is real funny when uh, Natasha's trying to 
get him to ask out the one girl, Kristen, and he's all like, <clears throat> that's why I don't ask. And then she's all like, too shy or too scared? And he's like, too busy, and then jumps out with a freaking parachute. But yeah, I got to say, Cap had real great freaking, uh, <clears throat> the stunt team in this film was amazing. You can tell they took some influence from the Bourne films, and I really like that. And the film after this, the assistant directors were the John Wick directors, so freaking yeah, that's gonna be some solid action right there. <clears throat> but yeah, him and Black Widow had a nice little uh, friendship going right there, and um, I also liked when they're posing as a married couple after Hydra's already taken Shield, and uh, <laughs> he's all like uh, freaking. Um, <laughs> He's all like, she's all like, yeah, we're going to New Jersey. And he's like, yeah, there's uh, this place there we want to go. <clears throat> he's just funny how he's going along with it. And also when she kisses him and uh, the much parodied moment on TikTok where she's all like, uh, look, you don't have to answer this question, but if you don't, I feel like you're answering it anyway. And he's all like, what? Is that your first kiss since 1945? And he's all like, that's bad. That bad, huh? And she's all like, yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not saying that. And um, freaking, he's like, well, that's what it sounds like you're saying. But yeah, and then also war later in the film when he warms up to her conversations, it was pretty nice too. And um, also the end of the film when they have their last interaction and he's telling her to go after Sharon Carter, the niece of Peggy Carter. And I'll probably discuss their relationship after Civil War because that'll be where it's a little more important. But uh, yeah, just about all the action was great. The highway fight scene was great where there's that one Hydra goon firing a freaking minigun at him and he's like tilting his shield to like take down the goons. It's pretty freaking awesome. And his fist fight with Bucky, oh my gosh. <laughs> gosh, probably one of the best like non-Kung Fu fights in an action film. Like, I, I don't know what they did, but what freaking Bucky and Cap did was great. I mean, Bucky, when he was going up against Black Widow, was great. It was just overall great, but gosh dang. It was equally great for both, both sides when they were fighting. And also the final assault on Hydra was nice, too, especially when Captain America took back his, his old costume from freaking uh, World War II from the Smithsonian Museum and then goes on to fight Hydra and... Uh, the real great scene where he goes against Bucky trying to get him unbrainwashed and um, take down the shield helicarriers that are being used by Hydra to take down their enemies. But yeah, it leads to a real great scene where he's like telling him who he is. You're James Buchanan Barnes and you're my friend. And he's like, then finish it because I'm with you till the end of the line, pal. <laughs> Just a real nice solid moment. And also the end after shield has been taken down. Nick Fury's trying to get Captain America to go help him take down the remnants of Hydra. And then it's just so nice solidifying his friendship with Bucky when, not from Bucky, with Falcon, his new friendship. He looks at the file and he's all like, so when are we going to start? And then he's all like, we just did. So yeah, gosh, this movie, The Winter Soldier, really just brought Captain America to another level. It's like what The Dark Knight did for Batman. And it's definitely up there among my favorite MCU films. Not my overall favorite. I mean, I know for some that's what they put, but I, I still enjoy it. It's up there in my top five. So yeah. Guess that's all I got to say on um, Captain America, the Winter Soldier. So let's go ahead and go on to um, the next few Avengers films. So I'm going to try to speed round them from Age of Ultron onwards. So uh, there's that. There's the images. And now on to Age of, Age of Ultron. So yeah, this movie being his next appearance after the Winter Soldier <clears throat> deals with him leading the Avengers as they're going down, going on to take down the remnants of Hydra, led by Baron Von Strucker, as they've been conducting experiments in a country called Sokovia. And uh, yeah, definitely um, a nice continuation of all his arcs, and uh, definitely liked how um, this sets up his next film real well, along with his relationship with Tony Stark, Iron Man, but yeah yet again has many great interactions with all the other Avengers from Iron Man to Thor to the Hulk and um, probably his best one is when he's talking to him when Natasha's kind of trying to flirt with Bruce and he's all like look as the world's leading authority on waiting too long don't <laughs> and uh, also when he's telling Stark when he's doubting if they'll beat Ultron he's all like we'll do that together and we'll do that together too and the scene where they're chopping wood was real nice, too, after Ultron 
had um, Wanda Maximoff mind control all of them. And uh, yeah, and in his vision, he sees a world that is just uh, the alternate world, but he knows it's wrong. And uh, yeah, it's me really messing with him. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, freaking... Um, but yeah, it was, um, definitely real solid, and his fight with Ultron was real cool, too, especially when he was running towards him and whatnot, and, uh, and yeah, he also had, yet again, more great interactions with Black Widow that were nice, and, um, nice furthering of his character development here, so I guess on to his favorite, my favorite moments of his. So yeah, Captain America Civil War takes place shortly after Age of Ultron. A little bit after it, I believe. Because Captain America had been leading the new Avengers on many missions. I found out in the tie-in novels and whatnot. <clears throat> but yeah, this one deals with him going after Crossbones, one of the other Hydra goons from the Winter Soldier. And uh, as him and the new Avengers are taking them down, uh, he's trying to... He, does a suicide bombing, and Wanda freaking um, holds it and contains it, but she can't stop it overall, and causes a building with many UN officials in Wakanda from uh, Black Panther to blow up, and basically the Avengers image is now tainted and leads to a PR nightmare, and uh, sets off the events in motion of this film where there was Iron Man supporting the Sokovia Accords, Captain America still feeling like the safest hands were their own. So it's basically the meat of the plot. Then the, the interesting parts come into the character development, which uh, I discussed in the Iron Man video. And with Captain America, he still feels like the safest hands are their own. And after the events of the Winter Soldier, he doesn't really trust governments anymore. So I kind of get that because he had trusted them for the longest time and then they betrayed them. And with Black Widow, as I discussed in that video, she was kind of in between. So, yeah. So, uh, and also Bucky uh, makes a reappearance. So that's also part of this. And also, um, guess, uh, <clears throat> guess I'll go ahead and that's all I got to say in the basic plot. And I'll move on to uh, my favorite moments of Cap and also more on why he felt like his side was right and all that. So yeah, that opening scene was real nice, especially when he had his fight with uh, Crossbones and how Crossbones was initially kicking the crap out of him, but then Captain America adjusted and got the upper hand, which was nice, up until he mentioned Bucky, because that was when he kind of froze. And also, it was nice seeing him with uh, Wanda Maximoff uh, at the Avengers compound when he was comforting her after what happened and how he said, look... I share equal blame for what happened. Don't be too harsh on yourself. So a nice sweet moment with him and Wanda. Because that's one thing I like is with all the characters, all the new Avengers, whether they were returning or new, he always had pretty amazing interactions with just about all of them. So, uh, yeah. And, uh, yeah. Uh, also a real uh, nice uh, scene where Bucky's being hunted down after a UN bombing that Bucky was blamed for. And uh, he's going to go save him and the police in, uh, <clears throat> I believe it was um, Romania, the country that Sebastian Stan, the actor who plays Bucky, was from. And frickin' uh, just a real awesome scene where he's frickin' uh, saving him and saving the goons and also uh, where he's chasing Captain, not not Captain America, where he's, he's chasing after Bucky because Bucky got on a motorcycle and freaking uh, Black Panther's going after him and Captain America is too and he's barely keeping up and then he has to freaking hijack a freaking Audi. Gosh, I love it. I don't know why, but seeing Captain America drive an Audi, maybe because Iron Man drove an Audi and I just love Audis. That was just so freaking awesome. <laughs> so I was getting all giddy. But uh, yeah, and when uh, Baron Zemo goes in to brainwash Bucky, that was a real nice fight scene. And how the iconic scene where he's holding up the helicopter in one hand and holding holding this metal railing on the other was a pretty awesome Captain America moment <clears throat> and shot. And then the next two big tamales in the movie got to be uh, 
the airport battle where he's having his battles with Iron Man and Spider-Man and just about any other Avenger on the pro Sokovia Accords side. And um, a real nice moment he has with Spider-Man where he's all like, you got heart, kid. Where are you from? And he's all like, Queens. And he's like, Brooklyn. <laughs> also nice too how Spider-Man initially gains the upper hand on him and then Captain America figures out his strategy and he like, pulls his webs towards him and kicks him, which was real nice. But uh, yeah, definitely real nice. And how Captain America was willing to um, let some of the um, of his new Avengers um, lose so they could win later on. And also the payoff to the moment I mentioned in Black Widow, where she spares him when she tases uh, with her widow's bite, Black Panther. And, uh, yeah, frickin', um, frickin', uh, what was I gonna say? Frickin', definitely a real solid, um, solid moment right there. And then, oh boy, here it comes, the bombshell when it got dropped. Frickin' Captain America knew that Howard and Maria Stark were murdered by Bucky, who was mind-controlled, but he kept the information to himself, and Baron Zemo revealed it to him, and let's just say... Shots were fired, and uh, yeah, him and Cap were fighting, and Cap was just trying to save Bucky to get him out of there, but he was he couldn't. He locked him in in the bunker they were at, and just so many great moments where Cap is just wailing on Iron Man along with Bucky, and the scene where he's like, where they're trading the shield as they're fighting, which was real freaking amazing, and then leads to the moment where uh, at the end of the fight, after uh, Iron Man destroys Bucky's arm, um, Frickin' uh, initially Iron Man has the advantage, but then Bucky trips him up. And then it leads to the real awesome moment where Cap grabs his shield and he launches it on his arc reactor. And frickin' uh, <clears throat> frickin' uh, disables it and takes off his helmet. Because a detail I noticed, he would have suffocated if, uh, if not. So that was a nice little detail right there. But, uh, yeah, frickin', uh, oh gosh, and then leads to when, uh, he's all like, you don't deserve that shield! My father made that shield! And Cap actually drops the shield, and needless to say, won't have a return for many movies in the MCU, and timeline-wise, for many years. So, I guess uh, that's all I gotta say on him in Civil War, so what a way to end the trilogy, like, god, this just built off everything from the Winter Soldier, and... Made it all even better. Gave Captain America some great final moments and definitely a nice way to end the trilogy right there. So I guess now I'll go ahead and discuss his cameo in Spider-Man Homecoming. And, uh... And frickin', um... Then after that, the final two Avengers movies he appeared in and his cameo in Captain Marvel. So yeah, his appearance in Spider-Man Homecoming was in like these videos made for like a presidential phys um, fitness challenge, or I think it was actually called the Captain America Fitness Challenge. But yeah, it's definitely real nice and um, freaking how he pretends like he's good friends with all the gym teachers across the country. <laughs> and also how the teachers are like, eh, Captain America is technically a war criminal, but the state requires me to um, show these. And the real great scene is at the end of the movie in the post credit scene when he's all like, you know, sometimes you wait for a while and nothing comes out of it. And then he's all like, how many more of these are we making? <laughs> and that was Chris Evans actually breaking character. And there is also when um, Spider-Man goes to detention and he watches the video and it's real nice for Captain America. It does kind of give him a bit of a pep talk, even though the tone wasn't all that serious, where he's all like, look, you screwed up. You think you th you thought what you did was cool, but it wasn't. Look, you need to get your head up. You need to get back out there and get going on the right path. Yeah, but definitely wasn't the more serious tone. So I guess that's all I got to say on him in Homecoming. So here's a few images from that. And um, now on to Avengers Infinity War. Then his cameo in Captain Marvel. Then Endgame. And that's it for Steve Rogers, Captain America.
All right, since they take place around the same time, I'm just going to combine my thoughts on Infinity War and um, his cameo in Captain Marvel, which was just a post credit scene. But it was a new scene, not just stock footage from Endgame. But uh, yeah, anyway, this one picks up right where he, it left off from Civil War, where Captain America is split from the Avengers, and the ones who didn't side with the Accord, Accords are in hiding. And uh, also... Uh, He's one of them. He definitely doesn't have as much screen time compared to Iron Man and Thor in this movie, but he does get some great moments in, kind of like Black Widow. So, uh, yeah. But uh, even though there isn't much screen time, what's there is used really well and uh, definitely had some real solid moments, too. But, yeah, definitely had some nice interactions with all the Avengers, especially when Thor came back and they were complimenting each other's beards. And when he met Groot, that was pretty awesome, too. And uh, <clears throat> also a real nice moment where he solidified why he was the leader of the Avengers, even when the Avengers were split apart. And that was when he went back to the Avengers compound talking to General Ross. And he's all like, you know, I'm above forgiveness and asking for permission. But Earth just lost its great defender. And he didn't even give up on Iron Man. I like that detail because Earth's greatest defender was him. And when he went missing, that was when he was all like, Earth just lost its best defender. And, uh, yeah, also n another nice moment, too, is when Vision was saying, you know, I can sacrifice myself for the greater good. And, um, and Cap's are like, but you shouldn't. We don't trade lives. Probably his best speech right there in this movie. But, uh, yeah, and him and Black Widow, definitely, you can tell uh, from the scenes they got together, have furthered their friendship real well, which was real nice. <clears throat> and, uh. Also, uh, Cap's entrance was great when, uh, it, it, it might have been Corvus Glaive or Proxima Midnight, one of the children of Thanos, threw his spear right at him and he just caught it and then threw it back at him. Gosh, that was such a great moment. But yeah, Cap also had many great moments in the Battle of Wakanda also, especially when him and Black Panther were running towards the battle and, uh, also, um, led into the real great moment that I'll discuss more with Thor, where Cap is just fighting everyone, even though he's getting overran by Thanos' Outrider army. And, uh, yeah, that iconic moment where Thor enters Wakanda. And, uh, yeah, also nice, too, how he's always looking out for Vision during the final battle, even though it didn't matter. And I guess the last of note moment is uh, when Thanos is trying to destroy him with the gauntlet, and he's holding it up. And he's all surprised because Steve is using all his strength, but it just isn't enough. And Thanos just punches him and knocks him the fuck out. And uh, then that leads to after the snap, when after watching Bucky fade to dust after the snap, he's just looking at Vision's corpse. And then all he has to say is, oh, God, which is definitely right after that. But, uh, yeah, frickin', um, then after that, frickin', uh, the cameo in Captain Marvel focuses on how, I guess after Nick Fury got dusted, they found the pager he had to page Captain Marvel, and we see Captain America trying to figure out what it is, and then he, like all the other Avengers, is shocked when Carol just appears, is like, what the heck, who the heck are you? <laughs> And uh, that's what leads into her, I forgot to mention, this is what led to her finding Iron Man in uh, Avengers Endgame, because it starts off with the ship they're in running out of fuel, and that's what allows her to find him and save him. So, uh, yeah. So I guess that's all I got to say about that. So now let's get into the big tamale, his final appearance in Avengers Endgame. So yeah, much like uh, Black Widow and the original six Avengers, this is it for him. This is his last appearance. And uh, definitely was interesting speculating on what would happen before the film if he'd make one final sacrificial play and sacrifice himself to defeat Thanos, or if he'd retire, or get a happy ending and retire. So definitely real nice. But yeah, Cap... Um, uh, at the start of the film is going after Thanos and uh, him and 
Iron Man aren't agreeing because that was the whole, as I mentioned in my Iron Man video, the pre-Avengers were not the post-Avengers. And uh, yeah, the effects of Civil War are still in his mind and he's disappointed because he said if they lost, they'd lost, to, they'd lose together and they weren't together. And then there's a five-year time jump where, as it looks like, Iron Man, because he was retired, he never made up with Cap in that time period. And um, all Cap was doing was running like a support group for those who got dusted and would help from time to time leading the Avengers. But Black Widow was the main leader from this point on. So, yeah. And frickin' uh what was i gonna say uh and freaking and yeah gosh uh, also uh after he gets informed by the time travel the time heist from ant-man he's trying to convince iron man to do it but isn't entirely uh <laughs> on board with it but yeah he's also trying to bring back all the avengers while uh while professor hulk goes to recruit thor and a real nice moment where after the first time travel experiment failed, Stark appears, gives him back his shield, and as he said, the resentment was corrosive, and he decided, let's patch things up, which is a nice moment. But yeah, definitely, uh, I guess this leads into uh, the rest of the plot where there's the time heist and the final battle against Thanos, so I'll just discuss my favorite moments of his, and that'll be it for this video. So, uh, yeah, the last real big speech moment where uh, it's the this is the fight of our lives speech. Really love it, where he just sums up everything that happened from the dusting to what they need to do to right the wrongs of Thanos and also what needs to be expected during the time heist. So, yeah, Captain America, Iron Man go back to the Battle of New York and uh, he goes in to go get the uh, Tesseract. Or not Tesseract, the Mind Stone that was in Loki's spear. And frickin' frickin' um, after that, uh, <clears throat> after that, frickin' gets into a fight with the past Captain America who thinks he's Loki impersonating him. At least a real nice moment where he has his locket of Peggy and that's what gets him to like snap out of it. And when he also says, Bucky is alive. <laughs> and uh, also going back to 1970, it was nice also seeing him in his old uh, World War II base and the scene where he's in the window and he looks at uh, Peggy because he's in her office. So that was nice, but he had to go because of the mission. And uh, also nice when all of them returned from their time travel mission and then... Professor Hulk asks, where's Natasha? And then you just see on his face, he's just like, it dawns on him what happened. And um, he shows the depression stage of grief because he's not really talking after what happened much. And he's just all sad. And he's the one who said, yeah, her family, it was us. And uh, yeah. But then leads to him... Uh, in the real awesome moment where after he is battered and bruised after him, Thor, and Iron Man fight him, Thanos. A real amazing moment where uh, we find out Captain America is worthy of Mjolnir. And he wields Mjolnir in a real awesome moment. And uh, after fighting Thanos for a while, he's about to fight Thanos all alone after his arm got cut up. And uh, frickin'... Frickin', uh, what was I gonna say, his arm got cut up after Thanos smashed his shield with his sword. And frickin', frickin', uh, what was I gonna say, frickin', he's about to do that, but then the F Sam Falcon calls him, he's all like, on your left. And then through some portals from Doctor Strange, he frickin', Black Panther walks in. And same thing with Falcon and all the Avengers and leads to the portal scene. And uh, just a real awesome scene where he freaking just... Uh, where he says, finally, Avengers, assemble. I'll grab a Mjolnir. 
and uh, just so many great moments where he's leading everyone. And uh, also when Captain Marvel has the gauntlet and he's all like, get it the heck out of here. And also when Spider-Man's being cornered by all of the Outriders and Thanos is Chitari. He, he throws freaking Mjolnir and Spider-Man literally swings on the hammer as he freaking threw it. And uh, yeah, gosh, freaking uh, just so many great scenes. And then after uh, Cap got knocked down by Thanos along with Thor, it leads to the scene where he watches all of Thanos' army um, dust, but then he looks around and sees how they won. And yeah, then the funeral scene and uh cap goes back in time because to do this time travel they had to take the infinity stones so he set back the flow of time and uh i feel like what happened here what he did was uh he lived in an alternate timeline with peggy i feel the main mcu timeline is unaffected i don't get why some people say there are two captain americas that just theory doesn't make much sense even the russo brother said he lived his, out his life with peggy in a new timeline where he's old man cap and uh yeah really also liked his decision to pass on the shield to falcon because even though Bucky was his best friend, he did kill people and had red in his ledger, so it did make sense. And also how he said Sam was a good man, and that's what the doctor who created him said. He said, don't be a perfect soldier, but a good man. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, definitely a nice iteration of Captain America. Definitely got me interested in reading a lot of his comics, and, um... I guess all I gotta to say is I'll miss Chris Evans. He had one heck of a run. This nine-year run was a pretty great run, and he'll be missed. But I'm glad we got uh, Sam Wilson as Captain America. So uh, can't wait to see what's going to happen there. So I guess that's the end of this video. So that's part two of the MCU Trinity. So one more to go with Thor. So like, comment, subscribe, and peace.